Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time or you're a returning viewer, you are definitely welcome. Do not forget to like and subscribe below. Now let's get into today's video. As you can see, I'm actually serious. I have my laptop, I have my glasses. We're talking about IELTS and definitely how to prep for your IELTS. So now, IELTS is really important as part of your express entry journey because they actually award a lot of points to your IELTS score. So you can get up to like 136 points if you ace your IELTS. So you know how Express Entry is a points-based system and all of those things. Uh, if you haven't seen my other videos where we talked about how to even get to the point of you writing your IELTS exam, definitely watch them because it will lead you up to this point where you have to prepare for IELTS. Now, let's get into it. IELTS is how they will test you on speaking, writing, reading, and listening and then they would award points to you on different categories and those points is what you would then put in your express entry profile to say I've taken my IELTS exam and these are the points uh, that I got in that exam so typically your IELTS exam or IELTS results needs to be less than two years old for you to use it in your express entry profile so let's say this is 2021 happy new year by the way so let's say you uh wrote your exam in 2017 you it will it would have expired because it needs to be two years old for you to use it so that being said let's get into ielts how do you prepare for your ielts exam now ielts is it's tricky it's easy and it can be hard at the same time i say this because i took two ielts tests one academic and one general if you remember all my other videos, I told you I wanted to go to Australia, I wanted to go to New Zealand. So I had to do IELTS Academic. So I actually did IELTS Academic, and then when I heard about Express Entry Canada, I knew I had to read for IELTS General. Those are two different types of IELTS. Academic is for Masters, and General is for like Immigration and PR and all of those things. So I already prepared for Academic uh, before I started, or before I started reading for general, but because the writing and the reading is different for these two options of IELTS, I had to read all over again. So I just took it as you don't know anything about IELTS, just start reading from scratch. So that was what I did. And now, uh, if you want to register for your IELTS, there are two bodies in Nigeria, or I'm going to talk about Nigeria most. Uh, there are two people or two bodies of organization that you can register with. That's British Council and IDP. Now, I don't know which one is better. Let me just put it out there. I did with British Council, and it, it worked for me. I only took it once, and I got the points I was looking for. But I've also seen people in the past write with IDP because they seem to be more lenient in how they mark. Uh, when it comes to like your speaking and your writing because obviously the listening and the reading there's no way around it there's already a fixed answer that you have to get but for your writing and for your speaking there it needs to be more lenient so people tend to go with idp more if they've done british council and they're not getting the score they want so those are your two options british council and idp whichever one works for you and i think it's about 75k so definitely check that out as well now when you register with british council because that was the one i used you get access to something called ielts practice um uh, road prepare or something prepare test or road to test i think that's what they call it and then you have access to this until you take your exam so they would help you give you like strategies on how to prepare for each section the reading section what are they looking for how to know uh, the things that are just like uh that is not needed as part of the paragraph but they just put it there as buffer to waste your time how to like pick out things from your listening and all of those things they would actually help you prepare and it works but this is the thing just like any other exam that you're preparing for you just don't use one uh one particular exam or one sort of uh one sort of preparation right you have to you have to go to multiple places now i'm that kind of person where when i'm preparing for something i literally read every single thing i find on google see i would even change my location go incognito so it doesn't give me the same links again i have to read every single thing i find i find on google to prepare for an exam and that was the same thing i did for my ielts but before we get into how i prepared let me break it down a bit so ielts has four sections there is paper based and computer based i did paper based there was no computer based when i was taking the exam but if you're more comfortable around typing on your laptop or just having that uh comfort level if you're sitting behind a the computer then you can do uh computer based if you're like me where it has to be on paper you have a pencil and a pen you're writing and it makes you feel serious then you can do paper based so um 
IELTS sections. There are four sections. There is the listening, there is the reading, there is the speaking, and there is the writing. Let me talk about the writing first. The writing has two sections, right? So you have two tasks that you have to write. The first one is like a letter. It can be informal, formal, or semi-formal letter. And then it's usually a maximum of 150 words. So writing is task one, 150 words, where you're either writing a letter to, for an example, writing a letter to your university accommodation uh body to say when you joined the accommodation wasn't good enough or there was no bed or uh, there is no light in your hostel and all of those things or it could be something writing to city council to say you're thinking of this idea for your community and this is what you want to do or it could be work employment you're writing a letter to your hr to say you've not had that work-life balance since you joined so it could be formal or you're writing to a friend anything so that's what your task one is for writing and that is at most 150 words that's task one now task two on your writing is usually a topic where you get to be more expressive and uh, it's like um it's not a debate but it's like an idea where you uh give your own opinion it could be something around uh children should they do something like a their, their leisure time should they be watching educational things or should they be learning another language or their leisure time should actually be leisure where they're not learning anything they're just resting sleeping and being kids so how do you are you for or against that kind of statements do you think children should in their leisure time sleep or they should read or they should learn finance or uh, read a book and all of those things so you would uh, you would say your own point or your point of view about this and that is at most 250 words so that's how writing works and writing you're graded on things like how coherent you are if hey, jesus what <laughs> you're going to be graded on things like how do you um how did you articulate your thoughts and all of those things so that's how writing works that section one section now let's go into speaking uh writing is for 60 minutes by the way so you have 60 minutes to write those two tasks or those two uh sections and then that's how you be graded so speaking speaking is generally about 11 to 14 minutes and you have like a uh, three sections as well or three tasks within speaking so for the first one is usually introductory where they ask you about yourself how old are you uh, tell me a little bit about yourself like a q a just to get you comfortable it's sort of easy it's like your day-to-day -day kind of conversation so you have no problem with that then task two is where they give you like a card that could have a picture on it or just uh, a diagram or something and you're asked to talk about that diagram now you would have one minute to gather your thoughts so let's say you're giving a card that has a picture of a painting or that has a picture of a house or a car you they'll give you one minute to prep your thoughts about what you want to say in regards to that car so you can say a card and say oh uh this reminds me of my childhood and uh my dad had this car or my neighbor had this car and he used to pick me up from my house to take me to school every single day and the commute was this and that so you're able to do all of those things and just gather your key points before you start talking to the person so that's what um task two is in speaking then task three is going to be uh them just digging deep or dwelling more on task two so they will ask you like more q a on what you said on task two and just dig deeper and this is where you have the ability to be uh fiction like you can do fiction and just say things that you don't even occur you never had a car your father didn't have a car whatever it is just be able to do storytelling or narrate the story in such a way that you're using big words now let me tell you when it comes to speaking like i said i grew up in Oshun, which is a village i grew up there for like 15 years so my first language was yoruba it wasn't english so me trying to read for ielts and talking about writing and speaking was it wasn't difficult for me but i just had to learn so tiny words like commutes like uh aggregates <laughs> i don't know just those fancy words that somebody will use on a normal day were big for me and i had to use those words so if you can try to replace your regular words with um more complicated words or more fancy words that makes it seem like you have a range of uh, vocabulary that you can use so that's actually how they uh grade you on speaking so they will check things like your range of words your vocabulary how you're using tenses are you saying words and is the right way uh are you using the wrong thing so just be confident in what you're saying even if they ask you to repeat yourself it doesn't mean you've said anything wrong i feel like most people might not have this problem because uh if english is your first language or you grew up in lagos like you might be fine for someone like me that had to learn it was somewhat challenging 
so that's speaking so speaking is like 15 11 to 14 minutes and you'll be good in most cases to be sincere with you i've only seen just a few like one out of 20 or one out of 30 but in most cases your speaking test is on another day so your writing your reading and your listening is on one day and your speaking is done on another day maybe like two days before or two days after whatever it is but it's usually not on the same day as your other test so we've talked about writing we've talked about speaking now let's talk about reading c reading was my biggest challenge like reading was actually my biggest challenge because they just had like these funny essays that you had to read so reading was for 60 minutes and you had 40 questions so 40 questions and maybe three essays or three different essays that you have to read i'll call them essays but uh reading was three tasks the first one was something like uh a social like social survivor you they're talking about maybe basic uh environmental needs or workplace and all of those things no basic environmental needs like that's the first one the second one is like workplace survival where they're talking about employment you working you getting a job posting a job and all of those things that that could be the essay or it could even be maybe uh fishing be a fisherman just any it could be anything random and then third one is usually like general reading now in level of difficulty it goes from uh one two and three the reading is not my favorite but you just have to know what you're getting to so that's what re that's how reading is 40 questions 60 minutes three sections you can practice each section individually in the sense that you don't have to do uh reading section one two and three every single time you're practicing you could focus on just section one which is like the social survivor social survival section and then you could do like maybe five of that in a day so you're strengthening yourself in that section then once you've gotten a hang of it go to like the next uh reading type which is like the workplace survival do like 10 practice tests then section three you do like 10 practice tests before you now start to do the actual reading which has section one section two and section three and that way you can uh, consolidate what you've learned so that's reading now listening listening is actually my favorite it's like um, i'm really good at listening i won't even lie i'm actually very good at listening because i feel like listening you just you need to learn the trick now the trick for listening is don't dwell on one question so listening has four sections so uh section one is like a conversation between two people so maybe someone is calling someone to say oh uh i want to book a hotel or i'm trying to book accommodation it's just conversation between pe two people where they give basic information like uh address home uh p.o box and all of those things and you have to capture all of that and that's question one to ten then section two is usually uh let me see section two is a monologue so that's one to many so one person is giving like a speech to multiple people and you have to listen and pick out the points as they're saying it as well that's question 11 to 11 to 20. then section three is um a conversation between like four or three people so it could be like an academic conversation between a professor and three students talking about their assignments or their projects and any of those things and they're like four people talking so you just have to like pick out as they're saying those things and use it to answer question 21 to 30. now the last conversation is usually a monologue as well i think it is one like educational conversation where someone is teaching you about coral reef or teaching you about uh climate change and it's just something something educational that you would learn from and then that way you would use it to answer question 31 to 40. now see like i said listening is simple I, i'm not kidding listening is actually very simple all you have to do is don't dwell so don't dwell on it as you're listening to it and they're giving answers and you feel like oh i've missed question three and you're trying to remember as you're trying to remember they've already talked about question four five and six and you've already missed those three so don't give up one don't give up three uh answers just because you're trying to get one whatever you remember at that point in time just write it down so write it down write the synonym as fast as you can and just move on uh but also put it on your rush sheet because you have 10 minutes at the end of the section to transfer it to your main answer sheet so listening is 40 minutes 30 minutes for the question itself 10 10 10 no no 10 minutes. i don't know how they broke it down but 30 minutes for the uh listening itself then 10 minutes to transfer your answers from your rough sheet into your answer sheet 
so listening do not dwell on it. it's like i don't know how i can overemphasize it don't dwell on any question just write as fast as you can pick out even you even write things that are not going to be asked or things that are not going to be important but we help you remember when they ask a question following what you've written you're like okay this person was talking about trying to get their credit card so now you know that the question was asking you uh what information is needed for you to make a registration it's your credit card details so you got the number of the credit card but you didn't write credit card down but the question is now asking uh what what information do you need then you know that okay because i wrote credit card down definitely i need the credit card details so that can help you one other thing to note about all the sections especially reading and listening is that when they say write no more than one word don't write two don't write three if they say one word it is one word if they say two words two words like if they say no more than three words then don't put a full sentence of how uh, the journey was long and this is what it's not necessary it's not going to help you they you miss the question and you miss the answer so if they say one word two words three words stick to that and don't overdo whatever they tell you not to do let me see am i missing anything out on any of these things i don't think so just uh practice 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 this is what i did for speaking i would record myself like i would i'll put all the links below like i'll put all the practice links that there, see there are thousands of practice tests on the internet that you can get for ielts so the more you practice the more comfortable you get it got to a point where i was getting 40 over 40 in listening and reading like i got to that point but initially i was getting 20 21 which was like 50 50 percent and all of those things so the more you practice the more comfortable you get and then the better you get at the test itself so practice very well check my description box i'm going to put all the links that i can find on the internet that you can use to practice and that will help you for speaking record yourself speaking learn new words every day that you can use not words that you cannot explain when they not ask you or you'll be using the wrong word <laughs> in the right sentence don't do that you embarrass yourself and you score low but anyways uh so practice speaking for your reading uh practice as well like i said see um when it comes to all this exam and all those things i don't i don't take it for granted i don't even play with it i printed at least 200 pages of uh reading practice tests like i printed it out on a4 paper that i used to carry around that's work and this this was how i just got comfortable reading 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 and reading again so the more you practice the more you the more you get comfortable with it. I'm sorry, I have a cold. And then uh, for listening, do the same thing. Download the audio file to your phone. And then just when you're on your way to work, inside Keke, inside the bus, your commute, anything, just have the audio file for listening on your phone. And then you can type in the answer in your notepad or on WhatsApp, just anywhere. But just take as much time as you can. It doesn't have to be you behind the laptop always practicing. You can practice listening on your phone. You can practice speaking when you're having your bath, when you're brushing, just as you're talking to people in your day-to-day, -day, just start to do all of those things i'm reading i just printed out reading because that was the only way i could do it writing as well i made sure that i wrote at least one essay per day so writing one essay per day now the question is how would you grade yourself because in your head it makes sense right but um because all those practice tests i was doing as well will give you an example of what the essay will look like so you can compare what you've written and what they've said it should be so that way if you're true to yourself you actually know that i'm on that rubbish i write oh or you can say okay this needs improvement i need to use more words i need to use comma full stop apostrophe uh paragraph put in a new sentence and all of those things and that way the more you do it honestly just practice the more you do it the better you get and then you can ace your exam another thing to consider is uh for your express entry for speaking and writing, the highest band I think is 7.5 to a 9. So if you get 7.5, 8, 8.5, and a 9 in your speaking and writing, you get the highest band for express entry. For reading, uh, for reading, I don't remember what the highest band is. For reading, it is 8. So if you get between 8, 8.5, and 9, then you get the highest points for express entry. For listening, if you get 8.5 and 9, then you get the point uh your general ielts when it comes to your average band so obviously ielts does average band average band doesn't count individual section counts so if you get nine nine eight seven and your average is like 8.5 your 8.5 doesn't count is the actual individual band for each section that counts but i think academic it matters your average it, they might even take your average but for general ielts individual section matters not your average score so definitely Oof, that was a long one. 
<laughs> so yeah check the below in the description box let me know what i've missed out if you have any other questions also let me know down in the comment section i'll post all the links below and then go ask your ielts exam let me know if i was helpful in any way or if there's any information i could have missed all right so thank you guys do not forget to like and subscribe i will see you on the next video bye